God. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. So, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining us so much. And today we are very excited to hear from Mary Hamlin, who's the BCSC Transition Coordinator, and a few wonderful individuals in our community who are going to share their stories about transition. My name is Grace Kessler, and I'm the Arca Bartholomew County Executive Director, and we are excited to present this program uh, in honor of or in accordance, accordance with uh, Disability Awareness Month. And so the ARC is here to provide resources and provide um, really anything individuals and family need, families need along their way uh, as they are going about life. And um, we provide everything from help filling out social security applications to um, helping maybe connect people uh, around employment. And so I won't take too much time. And so I'm going to let Mary take over here. And um, if you are tuning in, feel free to obviously uh, chime in with questions in the chat box. I'm sure there'll be some time at the end specifically as well for questions, but I will let Mary take over and introduce our panelists this evening. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grace, um, and welcome everybody. Um, this evening, um, we are, let me kind of explain, we're going to talk to some uh, past students that I have known for many, many years. Um, I am Mary Hamlin. I'm the, now the BCSC Transition Coordinator, so I help our students with disabilities as they are looking to exit high school. Um, and the three families I have with us today are people who have allowed me to walk beside them on this journey, and um, I think they have a lot of good information to share and experiences. Um, and so if you guys can each just do a quick wave as I introduce you, because I don't know where people are on the screen at, on other computers. Um, we have Renee and Brandon Mitchell. Um, Brandon is 22, correct me if I'm wrong. He right. um, is, has a full-time job at uh, JC. He does a nighttime stalker, right? You stalk at night. What, what hours do you work, Brandon? I work 40 hours a week. And from what time to what time? Start from 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. And um, Brandon has autism, and he just moved into his very own apartment um, on the 25th of March. Um, and uh, and he's, he's already bought, I think, two vehicles. So anyway, that's we will talk more about Brandon. Then we have James and Kathy Dwyer. James also is 22. Um, James is um, working at two jobs. You work at Freddy's because you've been there for a while. And then remind me the name of the other place you work. Traditions. 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 Okay. And uh, that is like a senior senior living, right? That's for senior yeah. citizens. Okay. Yes. And so. Um, we will talk more about James. James actually went to Erskine Green after high school. Um, and then when he came back from Erskine Green, he too is living on his own and has been living on his own for a year now, I think. And so we will talk more um, about James and his journey out of high school and going to Erskine Green. And um, um, just uh, the, the lot, I can tell you the lot of conversations that I've had with all of these families about this has been, um, it's exciting. Um, I have Carrie and Logan O'Sullivan as well. Um, Logan also is 22. We have a theme, male and 22 this evening. Uh, <laughs> Logan has been out of high school for two years. Two years. Um, he has a job at Texas Roadhouse. Um, and we will talk about the, his process of getting his job at Texas Roadhouse. Um, and he lives at home with mom and dad mm -hmm. and, um, and also, uh, a, he participates in some, um, kind of day program activities with mm -hmm. Reed. Mm -hmm. So those are our panelists. There's three of the bravest families I've know. 
Um, and I greatly appreciate because they've allowed me, we have had a lot of really good, earnest, true conversations. Would you agree through the process mm -hmm. of leaving high school? Um, and I greatly appreciate that you guys have um, um, made such brave choices. Um, again, Mary Hamlin, transition coordinator. Typically I get involved with our students from BCSC, um, either one, and when they're younger, if we are looking at going ahead and getting uh, Medicaid um, waiver supports, I can help um, any student within BCSC get those supports, help you apply, um, and maybe assist you as I can through that. Um, but then uh, we find that important to do at any age because as you are exiting high school, often for um, students with, um, with disabilities, um, they might need those supports through the waiver um, when they're working correctly. Um, and so those, those, those supports can be very, very um, helpful. Um, another thing I have created, I'm gonna share my screen so that people can see it. Um, through the years, um, we used to have a, well, I don't think I have it now, hold on. Um, we used to have a transition affair, a transition fair, and sorry. Um, we haven't had that for obvious reasons the past few years. And so um, I started going ahead and working on this website which the idea of the transition fair is to show families um, the opportunities and resources that are available within um, our county for their, um, their children leaving high school. Um, of course, what we want are we wanna see either our students going into employment and or education, perhaps the armed, for, armed forces, the armed services. Um, and then, Beyond there, we have, we talk about some state and federal resources, some local providers for the waiver services, community resources and area programs. And I'm not gonna go into each of these two in depth, but if you click onto each one, it has different links of different resources that are available in our area. And I tried, as I learn about new resources, I try to um, keep this um, up to date Education, we are very lucky to have, um, if I get my computer to work. <laughs> there it is. Um, if you're looking at maybe going into post-secondary education opportunities in the area, um, we do have, um, there's a nice pamphlet here that talks about is college right for you. There's a link for the FAFSA. If you need help with the FAFSA, College Sunday, this is a very helpful link. If you open it up, it shows you all the, um, most of the universities within our state and how you can connect to their disability services coordinators. And then we have just kind of links to each of our local colleges, um, including Trainer Connect, um, which is an interesting um, resource that allows for certifications, not your associate's degrees. Um, and so if you want to find this web page, that would be, oops, let's see if I can, they'll let me, um, you actually go to the BCSC page. Now, let me see if I can find it. Um, this part and you go to special services. I, it's hard to do this. I can't see. Apologize. Um, sorry, you go to the special services and you scroll down. It is, um, here, this Bartholomew County transition council. Um, if you would like to find it that way. The, webs, the web address, I don't have anything cute and fancy for the web address. So, um, so anyway, that is just a resource that, um, that parents can look at um, to see what is available. Okay, back to stop sharing. Um, 
The tricky part I find in my job as we are looking at leaving high school and if um, you have a child with um, a disability and you're not sure yet where what that next step is after high school, um, a lot of the times I find is, is trying to decide when leaving high school is a good idea and um, what is that best next step. Um, and that is where we can discuss that at an IEP meeting. I've actually found it to be very helpful in my job that we um, maybe talk about that separately um, because families have a lot to process and work through often is what I'm learning. Um, and so maybe not during an IEP meeting, you are welcome to invite me if you have um, the Medicaid waiver services to a quarterly meeting. And that way we can discuss what your exit might look like with the Medicaid waiver um, resources that they have. It's important that we work with BCSC and with uh, your, your outside supports already. And so um, if you're new to this and you are working with those um, types of resources, that is an opportunity. Otherwise, just calling me and having a sit down um, and uh, you know, an honest discussion um, about what you're thinking, you know, what you want for your family, what your family looks like and um, going from there. Um, do you guys have anything to add to that before I start on your stories? Can you think of anything helpful? Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to take up too much time. That's just kind of a piece of what my, my world is. Um, I'd like to first start with the story of um, James Dwyer. Um, James um, has Down syndrome. And he has been, uh, he is an Eagle Scout. Um, and he is an all around, oh, he's, he, he was in track, unified track. He was a wrestler. Um, what else did you do when you were in high school, James? You were very active. What am I missing? Well, I did fight track. Okay. I did basketball. Okay. All coming King Court. Yeah, he was very active. He is very, if you've ever seen him, he is absolutely, he's just got muscles coming off muscles. Uh, <laughs> he is always, he's always been working out. Um, and so James, you know, we can share with, the, with people who are listening. Um, it was your senior year. And I think you and your mom and dad and sister and myself got in a car. Do you remember that car ride? And we went to Erskine Green in yes. Muncie, Indiana. Yes. Yeah. And we toured Erskine Green. Yes. Do you remember what your first thought was of Erskine Green when you went up there? What did you think? Um, I think um, I'm thinking on like stuff. I can think about that. Um, maybe my mom said about that. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to go? Did you think it was look pretty like a cool thing you might like to do? Uh, no, but uh, it's so fun. Uh, I got lots of stuff in there I can do like that. Were, uh, were you nervous about going? Were you kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'm ready to go? Or were you like, yes, I want to go? I didn't know yet. I was confused, so. And so you graduated high school and you did not go to Erskine Green right away, did you? Yeah, we went there, yes. He waited, he waited a year. I went one year, so. Yeah, so you waited a year. And then, do you remember, and I don't know, your mom might be, because logistically, the question is, how do you get to Erskine Green? Erskine Green is, um, and maybe Kathy, maybe you can explain better. Or tell us what Erskine Green is and where it is. Okay, it's up, it's located in Muncie, Indiana and it's a Marriott hotel that um, two gentlemen, uh, one Erskine and one Green, they, uh, Green was a professional basketball play, baseball player, I'm sorry. And um, they started this training institute where they focus on several different things as far as a career path for kids with disabilities. And, you know, it, they have everything from houseman duties to being a hostess to bar, uh, not bartending, I'm sorry. Um, um, I was thinking of the, the pub, but uh, food prep, working in the hospital. Um, I, that's the hostess. Um, and then um, 
working at the hospital, being a patient transport, being a inventory, you know, person and like housekeeping at the hotel and houseman duties and working the front desk at the uh, hotel. So you, your first meeting is basically you go for a um, kind of tour and they talk to you about uh, what the kids would like to do. Then they do an assessment of each child. So, or young adult uh, of what one they're interested in and two, what skills asset they have that will help them to be uh, successful in that program. So uh, while the, the kids are there, they live in a hotel room. They're given um, a debit card or, you know, so they can eat. They teach them how about public transportation, stranger danger when it comes to that someone walk, you know, knocking on their hotel room. Um, and then, you know, talking about the homeless that maybe ask for money. They take them out to do activities at Ball State University. Uh, James, I think, got to go bowling. And then, of course, it was during the summer when he went, uh, summer of 20. And so he had his own room because the pandemic. But, um, and they have an expectation of the kids Monday through Friday getting up on time, getting to class. And basically it's like a college and going out and um, learning how to tip uh, and things like that. So it's, it's, you know, if anything, the probably the priceless piece of that whole um, experience was the fact that James not only picked up another um, skill level, but he learned how to live by himself and um, doing laundry. They have the responsible for everything. It's like them living on themselves and they have nurse, a nurse that checks in on them, um, ensuring that they get their medications. If there's any issues, there's somebody there 24 seven. So my biggest fear of all of it, that, you know, it's one of those that at the end of the 13 weeks, for James, it was 13 weeks for the housekeeping program that I get him back. And that's, you know, and they, and, you know, obviously I got him back, but then we were told when the kids come home, they are not to come home. They're, you know, because they'll be taught independent skills. And what happens is like everything else, if you come home living with mom and dad, mom does your laundry mom, mom or dad, in our case, dad does the cooking um, and he just sits around playing Xbox or something, so. And I think our trip, um, you know, and I, I was very new to my role um, and I want like, I mean, and I've talked to you about this, that your family really let me into your family's process because we went, we went up to Erskine Green and then we came back and James actually fell asleep. He ended up not feeling well and he fell asleep on the way home. And so James, we were talking the whole time, all the way, two hours yeah. home. We were chit-chatting. We were. And, um, and if you don't mind, Kathy, what I found really compelling was the honesty of your family of how each one of you, because Elizabeth was there, his sister, his mother, Kathy was there and dad, was um, how, uh, you thought James was ready to go, but you didn't think the three of you were ready to let him go. <laughs> and you guys were very open about that, that you <laughs> felt like James could do this, but you guys had your own work to do at home as a family. Um, right. And you had some skills that you felt that James needed before he went and you felt confident that he could go. Um, and I just think that was one of the most um, really, I it, truly heart, heartfelt um, discussions I've had with the family. Um, as you guys were processing that. And, um, and I just found it very courageous. Well, and I feel that the biggest thing is as mothers and fathers, but I think mothers more is that, you know, we, we brought these kids into the, our kids into the world and it's always been that we are their protector. And um, as they grow for 12 years of schooling and 18 years, or in James's case, it was like 19 to 20 years of, his life, we taught him, we, you know, scouting was a big part of that. 
um, him to go on campouts by himself, him to know, you know, first aid and all the different skills that scouting taught, um, you know, being social, talking to people and feeling comfortable on that. But, you know, it's one of those that we as parents tend to want to protect them and not let them go. And that's, you know, and we knew that was the worst thing we could do because I sit back and think, you know, when I'm, you know, 90 to 100, because hopefully I live that long, uh, years old, the last thing I want is my son being at home taking care of me and not have a life. And that would be very selfish as a parent uh, because that's not, I don't think God's intent or, you know, his intent was us, you know, giving us James is to thrust him out there with the tools. And, you know, we have a lot of safety nets kind of built in. Can you talk um, about that? Because you're saying he lives independently. Talk yes. about how um, James and your mom, if you guys can let us know, um, what, what kind of supports do you need to live independently? Um, James lives in a condo and he has two cats um, that he takes care of. So that way it gives him something to um, be responsible with besides himself. But his biggest challenge is transportation. And, um, you know, he can walk, he lives walking distance from Freddy's where he works. And he's been there for over, you know, almost seven years in July. And then he also um, is walking distance to Dollar General, to the bank, to um, the grocery store, JC's is right there, a couple eateries besides Freddy's. Um, he can actually walk to traditions, but because it's up a gigantic hill, um, he doesn't want to walk that long distance up. Coming down, it's not so bad. Now he has you know, and he has a brother that works at Columbus Fire Station number five. That's right by where he lives at the lookout. And so, you know, it's one of those that, but if he wants to go in town, he could ride the bus and he has rode our public transportation here, but he choose, he doesn't like it. Um, so he does have a bike, he's ridden into town. Um, he'll call and let us know what he's doing. We also have a ring on his um, house where if someone comes to the door, you know, it alerts all of us. And so we know somebody's there or like today he worked, he walked to work and walked home. And uh, when he got home, it notified me that somebody was at James's house and I could see that he was home safely in a, you know, a reasonable time. Um, we have a video camera in the, just the living room. So that way, um, and we have Google, you know, where if his phone is dead, we could call him on the Google, um, where, you know, if he can't answer his phone, he could talk to me on the Google. Um, and that's something that's, you know, we have there. But his uh, older brother lives at Tipton Lakes, just right off of Gola Boulevard. It's very, you know, less than a five minute walk. Uh, for Matthew. Um, but we, and then on Tuesday, uh, he has a rec therapist that comes and she takes him to total fitness so he can work out. She takes him to the grocery store. They do some food prep and things, but I mean, he cooks, he scrambles eggs, he, you know, fixes his meals at home. Um, you know, we take the biggest thing right now is we take care of his bills. Okay. He does have a checking account and uh, we could sit there with him with bills and he could write his checks. Excellent. Um, so you've got, you've got a little, you've got, you've got a lot of interesting ways to support him while giving him his independence, which is, yes. yeah. Um, and I think that's the, you know, and that's one thing I've noticed in my position is when I talk to families, this, it, it, this, all of these are very much family decisions based on a lot of things that really that's, that's, it's completely a family choice. And so I, you, I have to say, Kathy, that your family is probably one of the bravest families I know <laughs> with what you have done. And, um, and I think that's a really, I think that's just amazing because, um, that's a lot of trust on James. Um, 
And every person, and that's what I would say that one of the hardest things with my, my position is that one, I'm not in your family. And two, I don't know your children like you know your children. And right. so um, that, you know, often I will say, and usually when I'm in a meeting, I tell parents, I will push you out of your comfort zone and you need to tell me when. No, Mary, that's not the way that this is going to happen in our family. Um, and I've always greatly appreciated that honesty with families. And, um, and, and your family was that way with me when we, when we were talking. In fact, all three of these families have had that discussion with me. Like, nope, not yet, Mary. Um, I start to say, not yet. <laughs> not, yet. <laughs> not yet. Thanks, Mary, but not yet. <laughs> and so, um, so, yeah. And James, do you like living alone? Um, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I've got to get over. I, you guys had an open house, but it was the whole pandemic. I am still going to come over and see your condo. So, you know, I, I, do, have a, I do have a question I want to ask James in front of everybody. So maybe we'll hopefully we we'll get an honest answer. Oh. James, are you ever lonely because you're alone living by yourself? Yeah. You are lonely. Yeah. So there's times that you would like to have a roommate I don't like roommate. You don't want a roommate, <laughs> but you but you are lonely sometimes by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Me too, James. And that's that's that is a true, honest answer. But I but I suspected that was the case. And sometimes asking in front of other people, you get an honest answer. If right. that makes sense. Yep, so. makes total sense. Well, thank you so much, James and Kathy, for sharing your story. Um. What I'd like to do now is kind of um, talk um, a little bit about Logan O'Sullivan. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Logan O'Sullivan. Logan, um, Logan's about as sweet as they come. Sorry, guys. Not that you, not that James and Brandon aren't adorable, but you have to. <laughs> Logan. Um, tell me where you are working right now. Texas Roadhouse. And how long have you been at Texas Roadhouse? Uh, a couple of weeks or something like that. A couple of weeks? Two. Are you sure? Two. Two. Two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Um, and uh, how many days a week do you work? Uh, um, two weeks. What, day, what days do you work during? During, uh, during a week. Two, yes. a day, two, week, two days a week. Two days a week. You work on specific uh, days? Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays and Fridays. And what, yes. do you, what do you do at Texas Roadhouse? Most tables. Excellent. Do you like working at Texas Roadhouse? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, can you tell us, and maybe your mom might help you, because the logistics of how these things happen, sometimes mm -hmm. the moms remember. All right. But kind of how did you end up finding this job at Texas Roadhouse? I just feel great about it, you know. I just feel great. It just was a good fit for me. Okay. And who, who helped you decide that it was a good fit for you? Uh, Jasmine. Jasmine. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you know what her title was? How she helped uh, you? I can't remember what it was. Is it a job coach? Yeah, yes, job coach, yes. Okay, so, um, and then do you remember, well, mom, you wanna tell us how that, how, how you end up with Jasmine, how that resource works? Um, it kind of flowed from af out of high school because um, Stone Belt comes into the schools or they kind of help with high school, getting them out and trying to do some things with them. That's um, called pre -ets. Yep, we'll talk yep. about that, yep. Okay. And then once they exit, um, you can pick which Vogue Rehab you want. Um, and so I just kind of done a little research to see which route to go. Um, and then we picked the Vogue Rehab for Stone Belt. Um, and then they worked with him individually. They kind of had some meetings with him to decide what he likes. Um, trying to get an idea of who he is and his mm. personality and what kind of interests he has. Um, and then they took that to then decide what kind of job to help him find. Yep. So, um, cause it was one of those where we didn't want to just be that same traditional where we just go be a custodian somewhere or we just go and do 
Um, Cause a lot, a lot of places like try to put you in where other people are, like where other kids with special needs are and mm-hmm. because they already have some employees there and it's working out. But, um, but Jasmine and Jonah, Jonah um, did well with, with really seeing what Logan liked in his personality and, and found Texas Roadhouse. And I wasn't sure about it because it is so busy and it's noisy mm-hmm. and I wasn't sure how he would like it and how he would respond to it, but it ended up being really perfect for him yeah. because he is such a, he loves people watching and he yeah. loves being around where there are lots going on mm-hmm. and, um, and it's busy. And so yep. I think in all the TVs, you like seeing all that stuff around there. Yeah. So I think it ended up being a good fit for him. And so then yeah. Voc Rehab just had a, they would go each time for a certain amount of time. Um, she would go the whole time when he first started um, mm-hmm. and stay with him and watch him and observe and then kind of give him tips on what he could do to, to help. Mm-hmm. And then she faded those as he got more independent. Um, and then now she, she signed off and she doesn't really even come. I think she does maybe once a month for like an hour or something where she'll just still check in with him. But he pretty much is on his own now with that. Yep. And isn't that, I think, like at first when she's a job coach, those services are paid for by Voc Rehab. And then when yeah. she signs off and it goes, I think it's called follow along services. Uh-huh. Those yeah. are then paid for through the waiver, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, Logan, I am very, very proud of you because um, I know that you were thinking about staying in high school a little longer. Um and then really you kind of decided you were done. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I do. And Carrie, can you talk to me if you don't mind? I mean, I would like for you to share because um, you weren't quite prepared for that. If I'm speaking correctly, we thought we had maybe another year. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Logan was like, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, we were able to talk. He decided what we were 18. Yeah. We were going back and forth with have it whether he was gonna stay in or graduate. Um and he was already ready at 18, I think, to be done. And we were like, wait, we don't really have a plan in place yet. We don't know what no. you're doing. I have a full time teaching um elementary school special ed as well. We live in Ogleville, so it's not like we're right in town and we didn't have a good plan. Um, and, and I wasn't expecting him to be like, yep, I'm ready to be done. Um, so luckily we were able to talk him into to, to doing another year so that we could kind of get a plan set. So we did that and the schools did their best to, um, to try to find something for him, but COVID hit. And there was no, basically when he graduated, the DSI was closed down. There wasn't, you know, they weren't able to go meet there. You know, his job at Roadhouse was kind of, he couldn't, he, they put a weight on that. He couldn't go to work um, because of the pandemic. And, and then with schools, we had been out um, or I had been home for a while, but living in Ogilvy, we didn't have Wi-Fi or internet. Mm -hmm. So that following school year when school started back up, um, I had the option to go back into school and work with the kids and for for job wise, that was gonna be a better fit because I couldn't work very well from home. Um, And so, and I thought we were gonna have him in a better situation than what we did have because I was working on transportation and, and things like that. We all were working that, on a lot of things before the pandemic hit. Yeah, all through. of that fell through. I couldn't get him into town. I couldn't get him to work. And so he was basically staying home five days a week while I was at work. And yep. he was okay with it for a little while, but then his socialness ended up becoming, he's not a depressed kid, but I would call to check on him and it would be like, he was just quiet. He just didn't want, he didn't have any activity. He didn't, he just wanted to sit and watch TV. He didn't want to, there was no purpose for his day. Um, and it just was not a good fit for him. He was kind of getting not depressed, but just 
He missed seeing people. He missed being at school and seeing friends. He missed being places. Mm -hmm. So I would get off of work and we would just have to go for drives because he just wanted to get out and see things because he'd been home all day. Mm -hmm. Um, So I decided at that point that teaching was not going to work. Um, And so I resigned. And then I put all my time into trying to figure out getting him back to work, getting him um, into whatever we could get him into. Um, And still with a pandemic, it wasn't working. There was just not a lot out there. It wasn't safe. Um, And so um, I don't know if you want me to go into the next part or not, but um, but that kind of led, that kind of led me into talking to some other parents. Yeah, um, no, and talk about, because so he works two days a week and then talk, tell me a little bit more then of what, what else he does. Because other options for, if you have the waiver, our day program, programming opportunities and then you guys have started reach so if you want to talk about that yeah okay so I got with a couple other parents and I'm like what are you doing with your kids because your kids graduated the same time Logan did Mm -hmm. I'm struggling I don't know what to do I'm not working but I've got to keep Logan busy can't just sit at home all the time um so a couple of us parents got together and met with some more parents and decided hey let's let's get something going at least For right now, let's get something where our kids meet up on Mm -hmm. a daily or weekly basis. um, And maybe we can go walk in the park or go exercise. Go swimming somewhere. Go swimming at a friend's or just meet up for a little bit each day and do something purposeful for our kids so they're not just sitting at home. Um, And then as we met more, we decided this would be really great if we could get a day program going because then that will help other kids that are in our the same predicament. You know, the more people we talked to, the more we were finding out that um, some other things weren't fitting for them as well. So um, us parents got a, a, a small a day program going and it's still in the works. We're still building as we go, yeah. but we're to the point now where we meet four days a week. Um, yeah. And the Mondays and Wednesdays that we meet are yeah. like half days. Um, and then the other two days that we meet are exercise and and like volunteer work. So yeah. we go to Love Chapel or San Susi on Tuesdays. Yeah. Um, and so they're getting on the Mondays and Wednesdays, Wednesdays, they're getting exercise in, they're getting cooking in, they're getting some life skills in. We're trying mm-hmm. to teach social relationships and communication, um, how yeah. to handle certain things like in safety things. So, but it's just put on by a bunch of parents. So we're doing the best we can, but trying to, trying to teach what, what we can. Um, and then the other two days are shorter days where they're, yeah, they're sure. exercising yeah. and, um, and doing like donation, like volunteer work. So. And I um, think you're yeah. absolutely right. The key is, is how do we stay involved? And mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I think, and that's what I've noticed. Um, and that's, I guess, what I would like to make sure that if I can help families is that you have all this. High school is the most socially rich environment. Mm-hmm. Like it or not, you've got people you can talk to. Um, and then young. if you don't have something ready after high school, you and you guys, you guys, all that whole group of parents um, and students hit with the pandemic. Um, and just as you were exiting, the world uh-huh. shut down. And um, it was not a real great successful launch. Um, it was a bit of a mess. And, um, and as we found out, the pandemic was not healthy for a lot of our, any students for being home. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's so. for the longest time he got to where he didn't want to go anywhere. He just right. wanted to stay home. But then when we started this day program, like he's up in the mornings now, yep. he's excited and he's ready to go and he's really, really liking it a lot. So it's been very, it's been very good. I've been very glad of, of that. So uh, it was me. worth resigning to see that he's doing some things that he's enjoying. That's, that's, yeah. then that's everything right there. That's, it is. Yep. Logan, I'm very proud of you. I really. Like shout out to North. Woo-hoo! Thanks. <laughs> East is good too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm shouting to my body right now. I'm shouting to him. I take it to our house. Got to get it in while I can. Big shout out to North and Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse, man. And I am going to come by and see you guys. I promise. I just, I'm, yeah. I have a rest of them back too. Okay. 
Well, thank you for sharing your story, Logan. Appreciate it. All right. Well, our last group, I've got Brandon, if you're not bored. Are you totally bored with us, dude? <laughs> he is a third shift, though, so he's probably just a little tired. That's true. That's right. So, um, Brandon, also, I've known a very, very long time with Renee. Um, and uh, he's another one who just, you know, just watching you grow up and become the young man that you are. Um, is one of one of my favorite stories to share um, with others, if you don't mind that I share your story because you've got a you've got a good one. Um, I think a lot of things that I found important with your story was um, how Brandon was really scared at first to get a job or to work, but he wanted to get a job, but he didn't want to get a job, but he wanted to get. Do you remember that, Brandon? before yeah. you started working. And so um, you were still in high school, correct? When you started with JC? Yes. Okay. Do you want to tell us that story of kind of how you and when you decided um, to start working at JC? I first started day shift back in August of 2017 as the day shift. And the next year is just only one year later, I am not even feeling well with payroll, so I decided to choose first shift. When I started first shift, it was very easy for me that there's no one around me. Uh, so I started first shift since in August of 2018, right after my high school graduation in June. And I've worked it for over three years. And it's gonna be my fourth year in August. And and so you have been on the night shift. Is that for three years then? Yes. Okay. And um, and you know, and I also it was kind of the same thing with the driving. You weren't really sure about driving, and I don't think mom was real sure about driving. And then kind of Renee, you're the one you, you've, you opened up my eyes to some possibilities with the driver's license. Do you kind of want to share that, that, that road that you guys took with the driver's license and driver's permit? Gosh, let me think back, right? What was it we did first? Well, you did the, we signed you up for the online driving program. Mm -hmm. Same as every other kid that they offer. I think it was like triple A, was it? the AAA mm -hmm. driving academy at the time or something. And so, and he went through all that online stuff and we wanted him to have the in-person um, instruction because, you know, they have that other pedal there. <laughs> um, and so, and they, the driver's instructor said, you did very well, but you know, we need a, Brandon has to do a lot of things repetitively to get it to really sink into the long term you know like um running the lawnmower he can do it all summer long but after the winter comes summer again it's like wait how do i do this so we were apprehensive about the if you're not driving every day you know if you don't use it you're going to lose it and then it's it's so important to you know drive safely and know what you're doing every time you're behind the wheel so we were very apprehensive but we did what we took what you did get your permit and, and i think that was you very, had to take the test how many times till you passed the written test, I think, was just, it was twice, wasn't it? Because you you got confused on the computer part of it. So he was, because I think it was like, if you had to hit the one button or just it would change the answers or something with this, the computer itself was kind of confusing to him. So we took it, he took it the second time and you knew what you were doing and then you were able to pass it. And then, uh, which you might have passed it the first time, but. And then we took what the year, about a year and a half, I think the max amount to log his hours because we really wanted to work with him and make sure everything was down pat. Um, and I would, I think we were just nervous about you driving by yourself. So it was a good excuse to not drive by yourself. You know, you have to have one of us with you. And because, uh, you know, we've always worried about the safety aspect of it because I, I was always sitting there paranoid of, well, my gosh, once you get your license, you know, if something happens and you get pulled over, are you going to be able to, you know, because it's like, um, 
the resting bee face, I guess. And we call it the resting Brandon face because sometimes he'll just look like mad or upset when he's not. It's just, just, just his look, you know, when you're big and tall and you're looking down on everybody, sometimes, you know, it, it, it seems intimidating or it seems like you're kind of being, um, you know, not a chipper happy person. And I was worried if he did something and got pulled over that it would be reflected it would look like he was giving off attitude or it would look like he was because oh, at first glance, a lot of people until they got, until they begin to speak with Brandon, don't necessarily realize that he has a disability or that he has anything. They just sit there and think it's just some big tall dude being a jerk. And, uh, and I think I was talking to you a lot about that. And that's when I think you were mentioning something about, well, you know, some sort of an advocacy or some way to help him and then start it festering into that whole self-advocacy card which kind of snowballed into a senior project. And you remember working on that, right? Cause you worked, well, you worked with Mary quite a bit on your project. It ended up, everybody um, wanted one. And it, it, for the audience, this was uh, Brandon's senior project was a card that we, and we got approved actually by the sheriff that he could carry that would have his name, his information, but also to state that he had autism that when he, and at that point in time, he couldn't advocate for himself. He wasn't able to speak the way he would want to speak. And then on the back of it, it had the list of names of people that whoever he was speaking with could then call to help him. And literally it was like, I can't advocate for myself right now. Would you please call one of these people? Um, and so Brandon made this his senior project. And um, Brandon, how many cards did we end up making? I think like 30, maybe 40 yeah. cards. 30. Yeah. 30 yep. You end up getting an award from the ARC because of that. It was such a great idea. And so that was, um, and that kind of helped you, Renee, right? And, and Brandon when out in the world. It, it did because we were both kind of nervous if something had happened, you know, he didn't want to get in trouble for something, you know, if, if, and he wasn't, he, he was always worried about that. Like, well, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say if this happens or that happens. And not that you're, and, and thankfully, I don't think you've ever actually had to use the card <laughs> in, in a driving situation, but I think you had pulled this card out in other situations, hadn't you? After you got this card, when you were out and about on your own or hanging out with your friends. Wasn't it work? Was there not a situation at work where someone came up and maybe not, maybe I'm. Uh, yeah, I can't remember if it was work or not, but I do know that he has used this card a couple of times and because some people, um, which it, it's, it's kind of sad because you think you should, you should treat everybody the same always. You never know what someone's going through and it shouldn't matter if you have a disability or not, you should treat people nicely. But in the real world, that doesn't always happen. And it's one of these things where when they would pull out this card, it makes the other person who would, might be getting a little upset or hateful or disrespectful go, oh, you know, and then their whole frame of mind will change because now they're going, okay, and they'll and it gives a reset or a pause to a situation. And then they're going, and, and then they may realize, oh, I'm kind of being a jerk. I better step back. This person's not even understanding me. And um, and he still carries this card. It's it's still in his wallet today. Uh, like I said, I think you've only had to pull it out maybe two times or three times since since you've made it, but it is a great little peace of mind. And um and since then, I do believe at the, at the DMV now, you can get your disability put on the back of your uh, government issued identification card. But at the time that your senior year and you did this, they didn't have that. But I like having both of those because you're not always going to hand your license to a complete stranger, but you can sit there. And, and I have seen other people have um, like business cards made up. So even if you don't have your own official little printout on a plastic card, just making business cards that have anything on there just to give people pause in a heightened situation and just sit here. Um, and I'll give them a reason to say, oh, wait a minute. And I think that sometimes does. Then people will take their time or they'll step back, reassess the situation and, and give a moment of calm and uh, reflection. But I was very proud that he did this for his senior project. And, and it was a huge stress reliever. It, it took a lot of that, you know, probably unwarranted apprehension where you're just like, my baby's going out in the world. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be there to make sure that, that everyone's, you know, being correct. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think the greatest fear is um, 
all the 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 all that could go wrong when we put our kids out in the world by themselves. Yeah, because you want to make them. sure. Yeah, you, you can do everything you want to do to prepare them and you can do an excellent job raising your kids and giving them all their skills, but you, you have no control over the rest of the people in the rest of the world and, and all that. And I think that's probably where, but you can't leave them in your bubble. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> that is, and that's, you know, and that's where I, you know, I, I hope that um, as my job as a transition coordinator, that I try to hear that from families and where, um, what is the comfort zone for the family and what's best for each individual student as we're working? Because every story is different. And so when we talked about doing kind of a transition webinar, it's really hard to do a cookie cutter transition webinar um, because it's not, as you can see um, from the three stories here that not, nobody has a similar story. It's all different. Um, and I know that, and I'd like to, you know, Renee, you, you guys did, you and Brandon did not use VR through to find his job with Vogue Rehab because you worked at JC. And so you were able to kind of provide those wraparound services and the job coach situation because you knew the people he was working with. And so, yeah. and now, now he's got the job. I bet you don't even have to worry. I mean, he's just, he goes to work, you go to work and it's a very separate thing. Um, but to begin with, it was a very, it, it worked for you because of you knew the people. Um, and then, you know, we have um, Carrie and Logan used VR and, uh, and Kathy, we didn't talk a little bit, James and Kathy, how you VR was how you were able to afford to go to Erskine Green, that that was approved and he was found eligible for those services through, um, for, through VR. And so when we talk to families, often we talk about voc rehab and they just kind of look at me like what? And I'm like, I swear it's, and every person uses it differently. And so I can't, again, give a full example of how your family might utilize voc, re voc rehab because it's a very individual um, type of, of, uh, of service um, and everybody's just different. And so um, everyone's story is different. Um, and Brandon, what I'd like to kind of go back because, um, not that I thought this, this, I've known all three of these young men as they grew up through high school and I taught at North. And so I, I know them very well. Um, and not that we would be surprised, but Brandon, how many cars of your own have you purchased at this stage? Um, not hundred percent sure. Well, you, you bought your first car that you bought was your jeep yeah and you bought and that I, with your with your own money correct well i didn't bought it my dad yeah, bought it for me okay and then you fixed it up yeah yeah and then did you sell the jeep with your help of your dad a little bit i didn't do it myself he did it for me you and him together sold the jeep for what because you traded it in or no you sold it outright but what did you use your money sold it for 2500 um, but before you sold it, what did you do? I don't know. Got your truck. What did yeah. you fixed it? You didn't, you, vehicle, didn't you actually do work on it to make the Jeep worth more money? Is that right? Yeah. And then you sold that. And then what did you buy after the Jeep? A truck. And did you use your I, own money to buy that truck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You bought just, the truck before you sold the Jeep, didn't you? You yeah. made sure you had a new vehicle before you got rid of your old vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a good idea with jobs, right? <laughs> make sure yeah. before make you, sure you have a job. Plan. <laughs> make sure you then, have a job. How long was your loan for your truck? Your original loan you had a, was a five year loan? Yeah. And how when how long did it take for you to pay it off? Two and a half years. Two and a half three years. years yeah. depending. You paid it off in two and a half years. So you got a loan. Can I ask, did you guys need to co-sign with the loan? Or was he able to get the loan on his own? Do you remember? I had to co-sign for my kids. <laughs> I, just, I can't remember if dad co-signed with you or not. Well, he did. I think so he could, yeah. I think we I think we co-signed the loan for the truck, but he made all the payments and he had the down payment on his own. Mm -hmm. um, and then your credit from that, you ended up, you just got this apartment and you, qualified for it with no, no co-signer. So 
-hmm. his his credit score from getting that truck we've worked on credit right that's what we said you, yeah so i wouldn't let him move out till we paid off his truck I then said, i <laughs> then i got the title yeah so i don't have to do payments no you own that truck now don't you congratulations yeah. And then that's when we said, okay, now we can go look for an apartment, which I thought would take a year and it did not. <laughs> and then you went and you applied for the apartment, right? Mm -hmm. And you qualified for that on your own accord. And I wish, I really wish that the people out there that are watching this could see where each of these three young men were when they came into high school. Cause you guys <laughs> were not what you are today. <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, the, the amount of growth um, that I have seen in the three of you from the ages of 14, 15 to 22 are just, they're huge. Um, and uh, I think you should be very, very proud of where you are today. I'm not done with you. I'm going to want to know where you go from here on out. You guys have great stories. <laughs> I see you. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts or stories you think would be important for families as they're looking at high school, the end of high school and where, what you do next? Anything we've missed? Any I'd like to say for anyone who's younger, when your child's first diagnosed or when they're in grade school or younger kindergarten and all that, and you're going, oh my gosh, what's their life going to be like? Um, don't always listen to what everybody else says. Um, you know, your it's your child's gonna have their own path. And I mean, if I listen to what people had said when he was between the ages of two and six, um, I don't I don't think you'd be where you're at today. But because um, nobody can tell the future. And if you guys could have met him when he was five and six years old, with very limited. He's not much of a talker today, but again, he's third shift. I know he's really tired. <laughs> um, but for everything that, that you've accomplished, considering that when he was younger, they said, oh, classic autism, just make a plan for him. You'll, he'll never be able to take care of himself. He'll, but there were so many nevers to, told us to us, um, you know, he's never going to have a full-time job. He's never going to be able to live by himself. He'll never graduate high school. Um, you know, at, at a time they said, oh, he'll never be potty trained. Just, just plan for having to take care of this child the rest of your life and make plans for when you're gone because he's never going to be able to make it on his own. And that was, and I'm sitting there going, but he's three, <laughs> you know all this. And I'm sure at the time, and this was a long time ago before a lot was really known about autism and the whole spectrum, there wasn't even a spectrum back then. Um, it, it was more, it was, I think they just didn't want you to get your hopes up, but so don't never listen to, to anybody that says your child can't do something. Wait until your child says, Hey, this is, this is beyond my limit. If, if they say that, and even then push them out of the comfort zone. Um, Cause sometimes we'll sit there and think, Oh, I don't know if I can do that until you do it. And you go, Oh, look at that. I could do that. And, and that's kind of how you are. Right. You're sitting there going, I did that. You know, I live on my own. <laughs> I drive my vehicle that I pay for. You pay all your own bills, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be very proud of yourself for that. Any kid, I think, nowadays oh. that can do all that in today's world. And um, any any little thing that, yeah, so never listen to uh, anyone who says never to you, <laughs> I guess, right? Do you have any advice for anybody? As you remember high school when you went in as your freshman year, do you remember when you first met Mary? Yeah. He was probably like, I don't like that woman. She's going to make me do things I don't want to do. I did. I did push him a little bit out of his comfort zone a few times. <laughs> but but then you ended up what? You were the one texting, texting Mary all the time. You would text her questions and, and she would answer you honestly. And you knew that you could trust her, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she helped you a lot in high school, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she had a good hand in, in, in you getting a, your diploma? Well, it is, it is the, the families and some, um, and the trust that you have in your teachers and the honesty that I can say that all three of us, as we worked with each other and your young men, um, we all were able to be honest with each other about what we liked and what we didn't like. And, um, 
and I never once felt any of you. Yeah, you got, we were a team. We didn't always agree, but we were a team. And um, I just think the three of you are tremendous families. And um, and I just, as you know, people are looking at it, I understand how very scary mm -hmm. that next step is. And um, we want to somehow create a way so that parents um, can can maybe even reach out to any of you um, to kind of talk about what you've done. Um, I feel pretty confident saying that I think you guys would be willing to chat with other parents. Um, I, I can share all three of these families have given me permission to share their stories, um, which I greatly appreciate. Um, and because uh, that's how we learn is by looking at uh, what, what can be. Um, and I just think you guys are phenomenal human beings. So um, I think we're probably going to wrap this up. I think we're pretty, this was phenomenal. Thank you. Logan, James, Brandon, thank you for your time. You're welcome, boss. Big shout out to North. <laughs> and East, and CSA. No, I just- I, I got a room from all now, I'm sorry. East, North, big shout out to <laughs> North side. Honestly, all right. Oh, well, you guys are awesome. We had a number of viewers who were on Facebook and so, we really appreciate you sharing your story. I think it's really important to um, share your successes and brag on yourselves a little bit. Like you've done some awesome things and some awesome families. And so thank you so much for uh, helping out Mary and helping out us with uh, having a great program. Thank you, Grace. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. No problem. So I uh, hope everyone has a great evening and uh, Maybe get some last couple minutes of the nice weather in. So, thanks, Krista. Bye, Krista. Bye, Jason. Bye, Tara. <laughs> Bye.